Hi everyone, this is Christina with another follow-up um, to one of Javas Luz's live streams. This was two days ago and was about using IRI canvases in Death Studio. Jay explained how to use those canvases and rendered a depth pass, but then he didn't know how to use the depth pass in Photoshop and asked me for this follow-up to explain how that works. To say it right away, I didn't render anything with the studio. Um, I can't do that at the moment because of a major issue with my graphics card. Um, when I render with this, it always crashes. So I used Cinema 4D to build a very simple scene. I could have also done this with Blender, but in Blender I have to fiddle around a lot more to get my passes. So I've done this with Cinema. The scene looks like this, the figure in the foreground and the spheres, as well as the cube in different distances. If we look at that from the top, it looks like this. This is the figure, the, sphere, the spheres and the cube, just so you know what we are looking at. When we go to the basic flat rendering, it looks grainy. It, I used uh, low samples, so it was very fast, uh, but that doesn't matter for this example. Such a flat render um, is the same like you get from the studio um, when you render without canvases. It looks like this. But Cinema 4D always gives me the depth uh, when I activate it as a channel. I will delete it because you don't have that. And then I have um, generated 32-bit um, depth map. And you can now see that doesn't look like that, what you get from uh, Death Studio. Death Studio gives you something like this, with black in the foreground and white in the background, and that is correct. Cinema does that the wrong way, always. I could use this one, which is inverted, but there are other apps out there which also do this the wrong way. And for those of you who use Cinema 4D or one of those apps, um, I will show how you can easily adjust that in the Lens Blur filter. Here I also have this additional channel, which I will delete because you don't get this from the studio. And I will also delete this layer here. We don't need that anymore. If you want to have both layers in one image, this one and your depth pass, please don't duplicate this one to this file. Because this is a 32-bit um, EXRs come this way and that doesn't work with the lens blur filter that's deactivated. So, you see, you couldn't use that. If you want both uh, in one file, here in the depth pass, go to Duplicate Layer and choose your flat rendering, the file with the flat rendering, click OK and you have it there. But you don't even need to do that. You see here, um, both files are uh, 1280 by 720 this also and if you didn't change that in the studio deliberately they have the same dimensions so here in the depth pass i select all with control a then i copy everything control c and then i go to my rendering go to the channels click here that makes a new channel and then just control v and here we have what we need I will rename this depth and deselect everything. So let's go to our layers. Uh, let's go to the RGB channels so we can see what we are working on. The lens blur filter is destructive. You can't use that with a smart object. So please always make a copy of your layer so you don't destroy it forever. Um, with this background copy, we will go to the lens blur filter. But before we do that, let me open the color picker. You see this here is black, pure black, and it's 000, and pure white is 255 in every channel. So 
we have white 255 here in the foreground this should be sharp and we have zero um, the black in the background which should be blurred if we go to filter blur lens blur let me reset the values this is how you see this uh, window when you open up the lens blur filter everything is blurred um, how much the strength you can decide with this slider here and the source is to none I click here and open that depth channel but now you can see the foreground is blurred the background is sharp and you see the blur focal distance is set to zero which means it focuses on the black I could type in 255 but there is an easier way to do that you see that cross here wherever you want your image to be sharp just click there and if I click the figure that corrects that automatically and now I can adjust the strength of the blur oh, I'll do a little bit more so you see this is really easy to adjust no matter which way around your channel is and as soon as I click OK the filter will be applied and the pixels will be affected so as soon as you close this file um, you can't undo that in any way or as soon as you do another command this is the comparison of that maybe it's a little bit too strong but yeah for those purposes just to show how that works that's okay if you have questions about this please ask in the comments i thank you for watching have a great time bye bye